Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Woja Mojo. Please like and subscribe. Today, we are going to roast on a charcoal grill a six pound beef tenderloin. I'm gonna probably trim. Um, I'm a carnivore diet guy. I try to eat nose to tail, and that includes sinew and all that type of stuff. A lot of things people won't eat. Normally, I would just, you know, prep this up, throw it out on the grill, let it go. But <clears throat> I do have neighbors, and my neighbors saw my preview short, and uh, and they want some. So I'm going to trim some of the silver off of it, um, some of the sinew off of it, all right? And I will show you how that's done. Um, it's pretty much, it's not too hard. I'm not as good as uh, all these people on uh, all these other YouTube channels are about it, but um, I'm going to just try to not take any, any of the, uh, of the meat off, all right? The good thing about uh, beef tenderloin is, uh, now this is USDA choice, all right, um, black Angus, all righty? So uh, the good thing about tenderloin is um, it's a very fatty meat. And which is why it's so flavorful. Now, as I said, <clears throat> I'm not going to pull everything off, but you can, once you get a piece of the uh, silver, as they call it, going, and you can, some people are good, they cut the whole piece and they pull the whole piece off at once. I'm going to do it in smaller strips, probably three strips. So I'm going to bring it down to a certain level, kind of end, dead ends right about here anyway. <clears throat> and bottom line is uh, it's yummy. It's very flavorful on its own. You really don't have to. You, you, oh, jeez. I'm, I'm taking off half the meat with it. I'll have to do something else with that afterwards. All right. Well, I'm just going to minimize it. How about that? Minimalize it. Beep, beep, beep. Bah, bah, bah. All righty. I'm not cutting off all these other pieces to make it look pretty because I'm eating it, right? You can cut it, you can cut pieces off of it to shape it up uh, before you ship it out, you know, if you're serving other people, um, you know, a dinner style. Um, but uh, most people just love a nice, good uh, tender one. Now, I'm cutting off too much fat there, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. End it right about there. I need that fat on there. That's uh, you know, that's that's kind of me, you know. Just found another good strip. Just kind of look around. There's only a couple pieces that this uh, this tendon, the silver, kind of runs about. I can actually do something else with that. So I'm not going to toss any of this. I'm just going to render it a little bit, um, and uh, see what I can see what I can make up out of it, <clears throat> you know. Um, if I had a meat grinder, which uh, one day I will procure one and uh, and we'll do a little meat grinding. How about that? You know, nothing right now. Um, so there we go. There we go. And uh, yep, the rest of that's uh, pretty much all fat. So I will uh, set this aside. I'm going to keep it on the cutting board, you know. Um, I did finally sharpen my knife after about three years of use. It held an edge that long. Um, I mean, a real sharp edge. But I was realizing, well, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put a little too much pressure on, on my uh, famous something freight knife. Uh, very good purchase, by the way, very good purchase. And it comes with a nice leather sheath. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, it's a beautiful knife. Buck makes uh, one that cost, uh, I don't know, uh, probably 10 or 20 times more, but uh, <laughs> I don't know how much theirs is. It's very expensive, but this is a high quality, uh, high quality knife. Excellent grip and it comes in handy. It's not too big to bring along with you on a camping trip. Now, again, as I am a carnivore guy, I'm going to uh, wash my hands real quick here or give them a little rinse off and a dab. When I took the, uh, I'll, I'll start, let me back up a second. Let me back up a second. When I took the uh, the tenderloin out of the package, I did take a paper towel, a couple of paper towels, 
patted it down. You get the blood off that's on the surface. It's not doing anything anyway. It's not, it's not adding to the flavor. It's not going to soak back into the meat. Um, but it sure makes it a lot, a lot neater, uh, a lot less messy when you're prepping it um, and handling it. You don't, you don't tend to slide all over the place. It's actually not blood. I forget what it is. It's, uh, everybody thinks that's blood, but it's not. Um, something globin, not hemoglobin, I, but something else. Anywho, <clears throat> now, the way I'm doing this, right, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, poke in a bunch of uh, garlic like I, like I will for some other meats. I just want this all topical, all all surface. Normally, I'd, uh, with other meats, I'd take a garlic clove like so, and I'd split it into small pieces and, and um, poke holes and stab it and push it into those holes, okay, uh, to get that garlic infused in there. But I, because I'm, doing, I'm cooking this the way I'm cooking it, uh, I, I just want a finer, um, a, a finer uh, garlic uh, and salt seasoning. So I'm just going to use garlic salt. Uh, oh, garlic. Well, you know what? I, I don't know how much of a fowl that is. And I'm not going to use a ton. Um, I'm not going to go extremely light. You know, I'm, I'm going to use a, a decent amount. But I'm not putting as much salt on there as I would with, uh, as I did with the picanha, if you watch my picanha video. Um, this is just a fine garlic salt. You can, if you have a grinder, it's going to make it a bit more coarse. It might not... Um, might not do as well, actually. I, I want the finer stuff. I want the fine powder. I have all different types. Um, I have like a garlic rocks, rock salt too. Now, in order to fit this on the grill into, and not, not just fit it on the grill, uh, it'll fit on the grill. It's a 22 inch grill. Um, but in order to cook this whole thing evenly, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, because the, it's, it's fat on one end, thinner on the other end, is I'm going to tie I don't tie meat up. You'll hardly ever see me tie meat up. Um, it's very rare that I do because I don't like to, uh, uh, I don't think it's necessary to keep the shape, so they say. So I have some uh, butcher's string, right? Butcher's string, <clears throat> not some butch that you run into it. Uh, uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> so I have this, uh, I'm not gonna sit there and tie fancy knots. I'm basically going for the old, um, you know, shoelace not whatever the hell that is, bow. All right, <clears throat> and I really don't think I need anything more than that. Now I'm gonna push this on the grill, uh, but first uh, I'll, I'll show you what the grill looks like. I have the uh, charcoals laid out, again, on each side of the grill, not on one side, but on, on each side. Uh, I have the bottom of the grill barely open, all right, the bottom vent on the grill, yours might be on the side if it's a, one of those square grills or something, but the uh, the air inlet vent you want that barely open just just enough that you can um, see probably a, a quarter to an eighth of an inch in of, of daylight uh, in the openings all right and in the top you're gonna also do the same thing you're gonna barely uh, barely uh, open the top vent as well you want as much of the uh, smolder going on in there so that you can have your um, have your uh, meat smoking at a nice even temperature. It's not going to flow through hot on one side, more on one side than another. You want it to like stay inside of that chamber, all that smoke too, and get that nice smoky flavor. And this is really easy. People think you have to sit there and do 58 million things like, uh, you know, saute it up in butter and all this and all this other stuff before you, no, you don't have to do all of that um, to enjoy a real good uh, tender one. All right. Um, you can really just do it like this and cut it in, in medallions to serve. All right. So, uh, that's that. I will, uh, I'm going to come around out there. I wash my hands off real quickly. Hit the pause button. <clears throat> I forgot to do my, uh, my crappy accent today. Uh, and that's okay because you're probably sick of hearing it. I certainly am. <clears throat> I am keeping the hat though because I wear the hat anyway. Not necessarily in the house. I'm not an in the house hat wearing guy, but for production value, you know, I got the hat, got the pageantry, let's rock and roll. All right. So pause with me. All right. Here we are outside. Um, 
Here's the grill smoking away. I just added a couple of fresh coals. Uh, all the white ones are totally lit. Um, so as you can see, I have coals on each side. See that void in the middle? You want that. You can use a couple of sticks to hold them off to the side or bricks or pieces of metal or whatever you want to use. And I don't know if you can see the opening, but it, it is only barely cracked open in the bottom, all right? That's your, uh, that's your air intake. So <clears throat> I'm not putting a pan under this, all right? This is just my carry it out here pan. And on, on the roast it goes. I mean, on the uh, grill it goes, all right? And I'm just pushing it together a little bit. It'll, it'll firm up and stay there uh, in short order. Now the top, the top of the pan, I make sure that's centered between the coals. On the top of the um, grill, if you can see, right i have the um i'm gonna close this vent almost all the way almost all the way and i'm gonna put the lid on and i noticed that with these weber grills if you kink the lid just a ch that's uh that's a metric term that construction people use anyway um just a ch right uh right there you see that uh don't let it slide back more than that it'll it'll keep those coals grilling nice and slow all right i'll meet you back uh when i take it off all right folks time to pull this off i did spin the lid around just to make sure that it uh averaged out evenly on uh, both sides with any airflow just in case all right <clears throat> it's been exactly two hours i did throw a couple of more coals on as you can see i do have these little lift up thingies i suggest getting those that hurt I'll worry about that tomorrow. Anyway, make sure you take your meat thermometer. By the way, I got this meat thermometer at uh, Big's Box uh, Store. Let's do this depot type of box store. Anyway, um, I'm poking it in. It's saying, ooh, it's saying 140, 140, that's not correct, yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's uh, that's where probably a little bit more than I want it. Um, but I'm going to take this off the grill now and uh, bring it inside and we'll cut it open. All right. All righty, folks, we're back in the house. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to spin this block around. I'm going to cut off this side. So this is that lovely, uh, you know, charcoal uh, roasted tenderloin, okay? You can see the nice color that it came out with, and it smells delicious, that smoky flavoring. Now, when I buy charcoal, if I'm not using wood, uh, you know, tr uh, wood, uh, charred wood, I use the, um, uh, I can't say the name of the brand, I don't, I don't know if I can, but anyway, uh, something Ford, uh, Henry Ford invented it actually, if you want to know about that, but uh, you know, he's the king of charcoal, I guess. Um, so anyway, uh, the, um, I, I get the uh, professional one that is actually made out of wood. It's not um, other uh, products in that coal. So it's basically, it's compressed charred wood. Uh, so. That's um, that's the dealio. So I did uh, check the temperature along the way, and I uh, showed you what it came out with. But I'm going to cut this open for you to see. And take a gander at that. 
Oh, this smells so good. All right. So I'm going to have to do something with this before it starts pouring out. My neighbors are definitely, definitely getting some, but, um, anywho, this, this is uh, exactly the way I wanted it. I could go more rare myself, but this is on the, uh, on the very light side of medium rare, uh, just, just borderline. And it is just, just feeling it. It is so tender, just so tender. And I can feel that smoked, uh, just ever so gentle crust on there that will not affect anything. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not charred or anything like that. And, uh, as I always do folks, <clears throat> I'm going to give this the old, uh, the old, taste test. If I had two thumbs on this hand, I would do it. Mmm. Mmm. Now you can make a Bernays or whatever. I'm just going to eat it like this because Because of my during the week diet, I uh, I pretty much strict and strictly carnivore. Mm. Man, that tastes so good. That can make an onion cry. Oh, shit. Man, that's good. You'll enjoy it too. Very easy. I really really took no effort very little effort and you won't screw it up if you're serving this for a uh, company and if you wanted to make some Bernays sauce or another type of sauce to go on the side or what have you go for it you know do what you want you put a little rosemary on the top if you want just a couple you know whatever you want a couple of sprigs of rosemary on the top will bleed and give it a little bit different flavor um i like to save for that uh save that for lamb um here again is the uh <clears throat> thermometer that I use all right it's uh it works very well it's like switchblade I gotta wipe this clean first before I close it all the way but it, it, it clips down and you can put it in your pocket make sure it's clipped down before you put it in your pocket guys especially all right so it's a nice little handy dandy thing it's got a magnet on it viola right it gives you also temperatures in Celsius and Fahrenheit um, which is great, you know, because sometimes you're looking up a recipe, um, and it, it might be from Europe or, uh, Asia, uh, somewhere outside of the United States. Um, and you're going to, uh, might need to convert. So you got your thermometer that converts it for you. Just do it as it is. Uh, as well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, please like, and subscribe. Um, you, again, you will not be sorry with the way this came out. You will, uh, you'll be the star of the party. Mm. Very, very good. Very, very tender. Just, just melts in your mouth. And, uh, I actually picked this up because I have a couple of chest freezers. I shop around during the year and this was, I had this frozen, right? Um, I don't care what people say about, oh, you can't freeze. Yeah, whatever. You don't know crap. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, if you buy meat, it's cryovac, and you throw it in the freezer immediately, you're rocking and rolling. Okay, so I picked this up at $14.78 a pound. All right, so try picking up uh, USDA Choice uh, Black Angus uh, Tenderloin for $14.78 a pound. If you go to the store right now, the supermarket, any supermarket, is, that's probably running... 25 to 35 dollars a pound all right but there are occasional specials and when there are that's when i'm a shopping you know so i pick some of these up you know my whole fr freezer isn't loaded with this but i do have several i also have uh, uh other meats and, and things as well I, I do all my shopping that way get a chest freezer i suggest a seven footer if you have kids you will save money throughout the year hey <clears throat> I just want to let you all know that I love you, all right, and uh, and God bless you, and have a wonderful evening. Hopefully this helps anybody. Uh, if it doesn't, 
eh, whatever. But uh, I really hope uh, I'm, I'm of some help on this. And if you have any suggestions for the future, please, uh, you know, shoot me a, a comment. All right. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening.